thinking about this, we've been to events recently. Are in-person events back? Is this now a thing? Like, is this, are we back in 2019 now? Like, can can we do these things? All right. So th- this is like a, uh, I want to like direct from the hip, yes or no answer from you. Do you think in-person events are back? Yes. I, uh, yes. All right. That's it. With so I get to say, we get to come back to long answers. <laughs> I agree. So I think top level, I think events are back. I think we can both agree on that in a huge way. Um, I, I almost want to, um, you've recently gone to an event and you were the speaker at the event. Yep. What was it like being in a room again and connecting with people? Did you notice like in compared to the previous two years where we haven't had events and that interaction, do you think we went too far and in person is where it's at now? Can we do more of this stuff online or virtually? How are you feeling towards the whole event ecosystem and the in-person ecosystem? Yeah, so uh, I love the entire experience, going on a plane, flying to the Gold Coast, talking to this group. But it was actually interesting. It's almost like the people around you have not had this before or it's been so long that they've had it that it's almost like they've overcorrected and they're so accommodating. They're so uh, attentive. They're so they're willing to listen. They just want to be around other people. Right, that that encouragement and that inspiration and that environment is infectious. And I, I used to go to events and I'm like, it would you would always like everyone knows the Tony Robbins, right? You'd walk into a Tony Robbins event and everyone's like on this reveling on on this high for a week or two after. It almost felt like that in a smaller setting. And I believe it's because these people have not nourished that kind of face to face networking, that group camaraderie in a long period of time. So I actually think that people are coming back to go and create those connections, go and create those relationships, obviously around whatever topic they're looking at, which is in our sense, it was business owners and, and wealth creation. Um, but for me, it was it was absolutely exhilarating. I loved everything about it. But it was, it was fascinating because I was looking at this saying, well, what are people doing in the event space now? And I've seen more and more events doing what I'm calling the hybrid, right? Where they're having an in-person event and then streaming it live. Right. It's like, have you seen those church events where like they've got the cameras set up and things and like so the elderly people who can't sort of leave their retirement village or home and they can you still go to church and stream it and sort of get what the pastor's saying and all those kind of things real time, but they just don't need to leave their home. But for those people who want to go and have coffee with everybody and do all that kind of stuff can. I'm seeing that now come into this sort of event space. Where yeah, I'm seeing everyone who invested in streaming equipment trying to make the most out of it. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go put the streaming equipment in a bigger room. Yeah, um, I, so- I guess that's a really good use case though. Like if you're a church and let's say you have a, a large amount of people who are maybe elderly and you know getting around is, is not as convenient as it once was, I can totally see the value proposition in that. And that's the difference between someone having no sense of community and a little bit of a sense of community. Like I yep. see value in that. I think that's great. If you're a young, able and willing business owner and you're electing to go to the streaming version of an event rather than the impersonal, I think you've got to check your priorities. <laughs> now, did I say that I would do the virtual versus the face-to-face? Um, the reason I walk through that is I wholeheartedly believe that the face-to-face is always going to be the preference of everybody. Why? Because the deals get done at the drinks after the event. The, the brushing the shoulders with other people in the same business does not happen in a virtual room. That happens by me coincidentally going there by myself, sitting next to a guy that I'm like, oh, wow, we're in the same niche. This is interesting. What do you do? Right? You just can't have those casual interactions by being virtual, even though a lot of these places are going to this hybrid now of, well, you can't go face-to-face or you can't go virtual. And I'm just like, it's an interesting thing to see whether people might try and, like Australian business owners might try and rest on their laurels and say, you know what, I'm not going to fly over to the United States to go to an event because I can consume the same amount of education. And if you're thinking about an event only for the education piece, you're thinking about events wrong, <laughs> right? Yeah, I almost and, feel like they should just give you a recording of the actual content to watch after. Yes. Because uh, in all likelihood in the business events I've been to, in particular the one I just went to, most people were, uh, let's just say, a little bit hungover from the night before and probably didn't <laughs> consume the content at a level they perhaps would if they were at home. <laughs> yeah, and it's just it's understanding how to play and, and to that point, like I was actually at another event on Friday uh, with two people that we work very close with, Charlie, and it was fascinating how minimal they consumed of the education that was being provided and how it was just a massive network play. It was, how do I ask the specific questions I want answered from the speakers during a Q&A session? 
And how do I go and brush shoulders with potential clients, but also potential employees, but also potential sort of partners that we can work with? And it was just, it was so interesting how 98% of the rest of the room went there with notepads and pens and going education, 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 even though the event said, we will send you recordings on the slides via email after it. And these guys are like, that's fine. I'm going to consume it there. <laughs> They're like, I'm just going to come here for networking, see what's up, see what people are talking about and meet the speakers. Yeah, and I'm like, that is so different. Yeah, there's, um, I'm sure you know of Jay Abraham as well, I dare say. So uh, Jay Abraham um, became quite famous for one of these concepts. And I say one of, right, he's got a lot of really great concepts. I'm a big fan of Jay. But um, he said one of the things that he did amazingly well at was what he used to do was well, he would go and study an industry and then he would go and study another industry and he would try and work out what he could take from what each industry does. And yep. then by being able to take ideas that were working in one industry and bring it into another one, he was able to generate massive profits. So again, it's like, you know, what an internet market is doing well. And you go, okay, cool, they're doing these funnels. And that goes, all right, well, if I take these funnels and apply it to the health industry or whatever it is, that he would often be able to find massive uptide. It's just because no one in those industry even knew these ideas existed. Yep. That's what I feel like events are. So like the event I was just at, it's really fascinating that in the last few years, you and I have been focused in particular areas. And it's like, you just assume everyone else has been focused in these areas as well. <laughs> you do so, think so. Yeah, I'm like, oh, what do you mean you guys haven't been doing wealth creation in the last couple of years? Like, what, what have you been doing? What else were you doing? Yeah. Right. <laughs> and then it's like, you actually find out, well, there's all these areas that they've been focusing on that you haven't, that potentially you get the opportunity to kind of swipe and deploy in your own way. Yep. And when I say swipe and deploy, I'm not saying copy. But uh, I must say that was the big thing for me. It was like I went and spoke with a group of very clever business owners that have done really well in the last couple of years. And my biggest insight is they've basically been doing nothing I've been doing and been killing it. What would happen if I took those ideas and incorporated them into what I was doing? Like how much upside could exist? And I think that um, that's what you get to create from these in-person events. It's like a jarring of seeing that difference. Of course, you have to be open-minded to it. And you mentioned like the ego thing earlier today about, you know, if you go into it just assuming that everything you're doing is right and, you know, I'm the shit and you should all be copying me, right? I think you miss the opportunities to see that. Yep. And I, I just think it's a very, very clever way to uh, just shortcut the learnings, get the learnings of a group and just bring it into your life really, really quickly. Now, if you didn't go to that event, would you have met those people and had those conversations? No. Yep. And that's, that is the, the power of these in-person events. Like for, for Australian business owners listening to this, whether it's for you, events for your business, whether you're trying to go to an event to, for example, find new clients. Like it might be an event. I'm, I'm a mortgage broker and I'm looking for people looking to buy houses. I might go to a first home buyers thing, right? Cool, pretty easy. Or if it's an event to go and brush shoulders with the people in the same niche. Well, I might be an internet marketer and I want to go and play with all the other internet marketers to see what they're all they're doing. And I can try and get some information to improve what I'm delivering. Or continuing on the other side, maybe I'm going to try and find a mentor or something like that. But also for personal wealth creation, it could be going to a wealth seminar, it could be going to a, an investment seminar or something like that, right? Having these, going to these types of events opens not only the information that you're consuming that you might not consume if you're sitting in front of the computer or sitting in front of the TV and it's actually got you scheduled in so you're accountable to, deliver, to go and get it and receive the information and see the people, but actually opens up these encounters that you just touched on which was things that you never would have had before if you didn't go to these events. Like you just never would, you don't know what you don't know. And that goes for the people as well. If you don't have these random encounters, your concepts of what success looks like and wealth looks like and all these things, it just will never get broadened outside of what you consume on the internet or in books. Hey, fellow business owner, if this topic and value packed a short video has resonated with you at all, and you want to dive deeper into being a full stack business owner, check out the full episode by clicking the link on your screen or in the description right now.